Venus is the second planet in our solar system, and the easiest to see from Earth. It's the brightest object in the night sky besides the moon. Because it is so noticeable, Venus has been an object of interest for civilizations throughout history. Early cultures referred to it as the morning star and the evening star, as they believed it to be two separate objects. The Sumerians recognized it as a single entity, and called it the Divine Lady who illuminated heaven. Later civilizations, including the ancient Greeks and Romans, combined both views by giving Venus separate morning and evening personalities. When Galileo pointed his telescope at Venus, he discovered this planet has phases, just like the moon. It is almost completely dark when it lies between Earth and the Sun, and completely lit while on the opposite side of the Sun. At other times it shows this distinctive crescent shape. Such discoveries were used to prove the concept of a solar system centered on the Sun, which was a controversial concept back then. Further studies showed that Venus was a planet with a thick atmosphere, and a similar size and mass to Earth. It also had to be warm, being relatively close to the Sun. That raised the question, could life exist on Venus? Could humans live there? It wasn't until the space race of the 1960s and 70s that such questions could be answered. Intense competition between the United States and the Soviet Union drove the development of the first satellites and space probes. It was the United States that successfully landed people on the moon in 1969. There you go. However, the Soviet Union were the first to land any kind of probe on another planet, and that probe was Venera 7. At first it appeared the Venera 7 landing had not succeeded. Russian scientists received data from it as it dived through the atmosphere on a parachute. Unfortunately, the parachute failed and the lander apparently crashed. It wasn't until closer inspection of the data stream that scientists realized what had really happened. Venera 7 kept up a weak transmission from the surface of Venus for 23 minutes. It must have hit the ground hard and bounced onto its side. Its antennae were not pointing directly at Earth. Some of its instruments were damaged, and so it could only send temperature measurements. Those, as it turned out, were enough. Further missions were able to take photographs, showing us the surface of another planet for the very first time. One probe, the incomparable Venera 13, even managed an audio recording. Most of the sound is wind, which is not so different from wind on Earth. You can also hear a few knocks, which were caused by components of the probe itself. There is very little that sounds alien. As we now know, Venus is a very alien place indeed. Its beautiful, shiny atmosphere hides one of the most hostile environments known to science. The Venera landers measured an average temperature of 464 degrees Celsius, making this the hottest planet in the solar system. Its surface is choked by carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid. Atmospheric pressure is 92 times higher than on Earth's surface. For comparison, imagine being stuck one kilometer deep in the ocean, except the ocean is toxic, acidic, and on fire. People no longer ask whether we can survive on Venus. They now ask, what would kill us first? This is not a river you see, it's an ancient lava flow. Perhaps water once flowed on Venus, but there is none to be found today. This is the peak of Maxwell Montes, the tallest Venusian mountain at 11 kilometers high. It is covered by a substance that looks suspiciously like snow. According to current theories, that snow contains harmful metals such as lead and bismuth. At lower elevations, the extreme temperatures cause these metals to melt, 
or sublimate. This radar map was constructed by the Magellan Orbiter in the early 1990s. It used radio waves to penetrate the thick clouds and see down to the surface of Venus, revealing a stunning variety of geographic features. Like the planet itself, these features are typically named after women from history and mythology. Two massive highlands are called Aphrodite Terra and Ishtar Terra, after the Greek and Babylonian goddesses of love. Russian probes have landed in several sites around the equator, including some close to Aphrodite Terra. They have shown that the highlands are dominated by basalt, a common type of volcanic bedrock. In some places it is coated by tuff, a rock made of compacted ash. Over time this material breaks down and slips into lowland areas where it forms smooth carpets of sand and dust. Exploration of Venus is ongoing and it is orbited by one probe at the time of this recording. Akatsuki is a Japanese craft that studies the atmosphere of Venus. Using ultraviolet cameras it has been monitoring formations such as these curious V-shaped clouds. They seem to be a permanent feature, and they hang above Aphrodite Terra throughout the year. It's the dense atmosphere of Venus that traps radiation from the sun and turns the surface into a pressure cooker. It is even hotter than Mercury, which orbits much closer to the sun but has no significant atmosphere. Measurements made by Akatsuki show that wind speeds approach 400 km per hour in the upper atmosphere, and may reach 700 in the middle layers. This explains why the Venera 7 probe crash-landed. Its parachute was blown inside out. Wind speeds drop drastically toward the ground, where they average just 10 km per hour due to frictional drag. Since the upper atmosphere is so mobile, it would be reasonable to assume the planet itself rotates quickly as well. This is not the case. In fact, Venus rotates so slowly it is going backward. Whereas all other planets spin anti-clockwise, this one spins clockwise. Even along its equator, where rotational speed is the greatest, it is slower than an average person running. Venus orbits the Sun in the normal direction, with one full orbit taking 225 Earth days. It takes 243 Earth days to rotate once on its axis, which means a Venusian day is longer than a Venusian year. It is not yet clear why this planet spins so slowly. The most popular theory suggests that it used to rotate at a similar speed to the Earth, but was interrupted by a collision with an asteroid. This idea is reasonable, because large objects have impacted all the planets at some point during their history. However, the theory raises an important question about the surface of Venus. There is a lot to see here, including mighty mountains, cracks and crevices. But where are all the impact craters? Other rocky bodies show a multitude of craters left by meteorite strikes. Mercury is absolutely covered with them. So are Mars and its moons. The Earth's moon also displays an impressive collection. Why then are there so few craters on Venus? No doubt some meteorites burned up in its atmosphere before they could reach the ground. However, this planet has existed for just as long as the others. Some large objects should have made it to the surface. There is another rocky planet on which impact craters are hard to find. Earth. The surface of our planet is being continually renewed by processes such as plate tectonics and erosion, which erase even large craters over geological time. Erosion buries the crater floors with sediment, and plate tectonics eventually drags them into the hot mantle. Could these processes also be active on Venus? I have already described some key features of the Venusian surface. It is dominated by volcanic rocks, and as we can see in Magellan's radar map, there is plenty of evidence for ancient volcanoes and lava flows. 
Here on Earth, volcanoes are concentrated around the boundaries between tectonic plates, where rocks often melt and erupt onto the surface. Ultimately, they allow heat from deep inside the planet to escape outward. We can assume that volcanoes on Venus performed the same task, transferring heat away from the core. However, they do not follow a neat, Earth-like pattern. No tectonic plate boundaries have been identified here. What we see instead are many circular networks of cracks, trenches, domes and rifts. The biggest network is called Artemis Corona, located on the south side of Aphrodite Terra. Artemis Corona has a baffling structure, yet there may be a simple explanation for how it formed. According to scientists, it represents a weak point in the crust, where hot mantle material was able to escape. That material rose up in a plume heated by the planet's core. It lifted the overlying crust, injecting it with magma and causing huge cracks to form. At a later time, the plume began to cool down and retreat, causing the crust to sink back down. It would have squeezed magma out horizontally in all directions, like a tomato being squashed. That would have fueled volcanoes around the border of Artemis Corona. Of course, this is just one theory for the formation of Artemis Corona, and it may prove to be incorrect. That being said, observations of this and similar areas support the idea of hot plumes rising through the mantle of Venus. They do not drive the plate tectonics we are familiar with, but rather some form of plume tectonics. Why should the interior of Venus behave differently to the interior of Earth? As I said before, both planets have a similar size and mass, and they should have a similar chemical makeup. There is something else different about Venus that provides an important clue. This planet does not possess a magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field protects us from the most harmful of solar radiation. It prevents the vital atmosphere from being stripped away, so life on our planet can breathe. The field itself is generated by the circulation of material within Earth's core and mantle, some of which is molten metal. That circulation is a key method of transferring heat, and it also happens to be the driving force behind plate tectonics. Since Venus does not have a magnetic field, and doesn't seem to undergo regular plate tectonics, we may conclude that its mantle and core do not circulate, at least not to the same degree as Earth. Its internal layers are stagnant, and its core may have completely solidified. At the moment there is no way to know for sure, but it could explain why mantle plumes occur inside this planet. They are the most efficient option remaining, for taking heat away from the core and up to the surface. Based on the number of impact craters that are visible on Venus, its surface is thought to be just a few hundred million years old. That is a long time to be sure, but it's just a fraction of the four and a half billion year history of our solar system. It also suggests that volcanoes were active all over Venus as recently as the Triassic period when the first mammals were evolving. It's unlikely that all of Venus was covered by lava at once, but the eruptions would have been nonetheless impressive. Similar events have also taken place on prehistoric Earth. They are called flood basalts. One of them is preserved in the Siberian traps of Russia. The event that formed these cliffs erupted enough lava and ash to alter the climate. It may have even triggered the greatest mass extinction of all time. We have seen evidence that this type of event happens regularly on Venus, renewing its surface with a fresh coat of lava. It is surely the most inhospitable place in the solar system. Venus may not be a friendly world, but that won't stop our space agencies visiting it. The Akatsuki orbiter will be joined by two new probes in a few years, called Da Vinci Plus and Veritas. They will help scientists to understand the geological history of the planet, in particular how its atmosphere developed, why it is so different from Earth, and whether it used to have water on its surface. 
further missions are inevitable because, as I have hopefully convinced you, Venus is a truly remarkable place. Its beautiful clouds disguise a hellish landscape that hints at an unimaginably destructive past. To understand how all this came about would be a massive achievement for science. I for one am looking forward to the next discovery. Thank you very much for watching this presentation, I hope you found it interesting. There are some extra resources in the video description, so please look at those if you want to learn more about Venus. Feel free to leave any feedback or questions in the comment section below. You can also click the like button and subscribe to my channel to show your support. Thanks again and good luck with your studies.